This lesson is on scientific notation and significant figures. It's about writing numbers while thinking about science, because sci scientists have certain ways of writing numbers, and they're that way for important reasons, as we'll find as we go on. This lesson is foundational to both chemistry and physics, uh, so th this particular lesson will be included in both of those courses. Uh, the material is basically the same for both, so. Um, we originally thought about doing these as two separate lessons, but as we started developing them, we realized that these are these two topics are bound up tightly with each other, and if you teach them at the same time, there's actually less to learn. So we're going to start out with scientific notation. And so the thing that um, I think makes scientific notation hard is because people don't recognize what it's for. So we're going to start out... Um, by talking about what scientific notation is for. So first of all, it's a standard. It's the standard way that scientists report numbers, okay? And scientific notation, in, in science, you wind up having a lot of extremely large and extremely small numbers. Um, so scientific notation is a way to make writing extremely large and extremely small numbers a lot easier. Additionally, um, the most important thing about the number is how big it is, basically. You know, how many zeros are, are there? How many digits long is it? Um, how many zeros after the decimal before we start seeing numbers? So scientific notation makes it easier to see the magnitude of a number just at a glance. And then finally, it um, fits in well with significant figures. So... We're going to give you some examples of scientific notation. So which of these would you rather write? The left is how you would write it normally, and the right is in scientific notation. So you can see that as you write really, really, really large numbers, um, scientific notation becomes more and more important uh, because it allows you, it simplifies the way that you write big numbers. And likewise for small numbers. Would you rather write the number on the left or the number on the right? Um, they're both the same number, but the number on the right is in scientific notation. So before we go in the details of what scientific notation is and how we write it, I want to go over kind of a preview of what this looks like. So let's think about the number 5.23. Okay. Now if we move if we multiply this number by 10, it's going to move the decimal point over by 1. And if we multiply it by 10 again, it's going to move the decimal point over by 1. So you see, moving, multiplying by 10, the only effect that it has is moving the decimal point over. Okay. So if we multiply by 10 again, we have 5,230. So we've moved the decimal point three times. Okay. Now, notice that we have 5.23 times 10 times 10 times 10. Well, since we're multiplying this number by 10 three times, well, that's another way of saying that is we're multiplying it by 10 to the third power. So we can write this number as 5.23 times 10 to the third power. And this is scientific notation. So scientific notation... Um, has three parts. It has the significand, which are the most important digits um, in the number. It has the base, which is always 10, which is because we write our numbers in decimal. And the power, which is the exponent by the 10, is how big the number is. So how many digits do we move the decimal point to the right or to the left to make our final number? And... Um, so you notice in all these examples, um, there is exactly one digit in the, in the scientific notation version. There is exactly one digit to the left of the decimal. And then the multiplication by 10 to a power tells us how far to the right or to the left we need to move that decimal point to make the number. So for example, 
in the first one, 1 1.527 times 10 to the fifth. That means we need to move that decimal five places to the right to get our final number. Um, likewise with 1.2 times 10 to the 12th. That means we have to move our decimal point 12 spaces to the right to get our number. And we can do the same thing with very, very small numbers. Um, we can signify that we move the decimal point to the left um, by giving it a negative power. So um, 0. Point, all those zeros, 4, 5, 3, is the same as 4.53 times 10 to the negative 7th. That means that we take 4.53 and move the decimal point to the left 7 times to get our actual number. So the rules for scientific notation is that the significand has exactly one digit to the left of the decimal point, and that digit may not be 0. It has to be a non-zero digit. Um, the base is always 10, and the power is how many digits we would have to move the decimal point to get the actual number. So positive moves the decimal to the right, negative moves the decimal to the left. So those are the rules of scientific notation, and you might jot those down or um, keep those in mind, because that's how all the scientific notation ones will work. So let's take an example of how to convert a large number to scientific notation. So the number we will convert is 625,234. So we're going to start by putting in our base, uh, a base and a power. And um, so we're going to say 625,234 times 10 to the 0 power. Now remember, anything raised to a zero power is actually just the number one. So we're just multiplying this number by one, so it's the same number. Um, in other words, um, remember the, the power is how much we move the decimal point to the right or to the left. And so far, we have not moved the decimal at all. So we are at 10 to the zero power. But after we move the decimal one place, we have to record that in our power. So if we move the decimal point over, we have to multiply it by 10 to the 1 to recognize that to get our, our original number back, we're going to have to multiply this number by 10 to the first power. And likewise, when we move the decimal again, we now have 10 to the second power. We're going to move it again to get 10 to the third power. Then we're going to move it again and get 10 to the fourth power, and we're going to move it again, and finally, we have moved the decimal point five places, and we have 10 to the fifth power, and this number is in scientific notation because we only have one digit to the left of the decimal point. So all of these numbers are actually the same number, they're just written in different ways. Um, the final one being actually in scientific notation. So you can see that as we move the decimal point to the left, we're compensating by multiplying by a new power of 10 that tells us that when we want to get pull this number back out, we're going to have to move that decimal point back to the right. Likewise, let's do an example converting a small number to scientific notation. We'll start with this number. Okay, so when we start, again, we haven't moved the decimal, so we're times 10 to the 0 power. There's no decimal point moving yet. Now we're going to move the decimal point over by 1. So we're multiplying this number by 10 to the negative 1 power because we're going to have to move the decimal to the left to get our final answer. So we move it over again. It's 10 to the negative second. Again, we're going to have to move our decimal point to the left twice to get our original number, 10 to the negative third, and now we have, this is in scientific notation, because we have one digit to the left of the decimal. And what this says is that when we want to expand it back to our original number, we're going to have to move the decimal point to the left three times. So, as a review, the significand 
has exactly one digit to the left of the decimal point, and that digit may not be zero. The base is always 10, and the power is how many digits you would have to move the decimal point to get the actual number. Positive, number, positive powers move the decimal to the right, and negative powers move it to the left. Um, so note that small numbers, numbers less than one, um, or I should say between zero and one, have negative powers. And large numbers, 10 or greater, have positive powers. If it's between one and 10, then it would have a zero power. So those are the basic ideas behind scientific notation. Um, and interestingly, scientific notation helps you out when multiplying and dividing, which is actually the most, um, probably the more common operation in the daily work of science. So we're gonna show you how to multiply numbers in scientific notation. So let's take two numbers that we want to multiply. So we're gonna have 2.4 times 10 to the third and 6.7 times 10 to the sixth. Now realize that these numbers would be a lot larger if we wrote them out. In fact, you might try it yourself. See if you can write these numbers out um, as ordinary numbers uh, before we start this exercise. So we're gonna start by just writing out the fact that we're going to multiply the numbers. I'm gonna put a multiplication sign between them. Now, if you remember, there is a law in, in multiplication called the associative law. And that means that we can change the groupings. Um, in fact, it's the combination of the associative and the commutative law. It means that we can, if we have a bunch of numbers that are multiplied together, we can change the way that we group those numbers. We can change the order that we multiply in. We can change which ones we multiply together first. Um, and so here what we've done is we've moved the significant the significands together, and we've moved the base and exponents together. So you can see on the left, the two significands are being multiplied by each other, and on the right, the two base and, ex base and powers are being multiplied together. Here we have 10 to the third and 10 to the sixth. Now both of those are the same base with a different exponent. And exponent rules say that if you multiply um, the same base with different exponents, we can get the result is just adding the exponents together. Because the, the way to think about that is 10 to the third is really just 10 times 10 times 10. It's three tens being multiplied together. And to 10 to the six is six tens. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Okay, so what happens when we multiply six tens by three tens? Well, we'll have nine tens. So the, the 10 to the third and 10 to the sixth will combine to give us 10 to the ninth. So we can just add those exponents up and get 10 to the ninth. And then we will multiply the significands as normal. And so our result will be 16.08 times 10 to the ninth. However, note that this is not in scientific notation. The, uh, we actually have two digits to the left of the decimal point. So um, in order to actually rewrite this in uh, scientific notation, we have to move the decimal over one and then record that movement in the power. So we're gonna move the decimal point to the left one and record that to get the number back, we're gonna have to move it to the right by adding one to our power of 10. So our result, is 1.608 times 10 to the 10th. So uh, one other thing we can do, and um, this uh, will make more sense when we talk about significant digits, is that we can also round this. And if you round numbers after multiplying them in scientific notation, uh, you round to the number of digits as the shortest starting significant. In this case, both are significants, um, had um, two digits, so 2.4 and 6.7 were our significance. And so the shortest one had two digits, so our final answer has two digits. 
Um, dividing numbers in scientific notation is also very similar. Um, so let's divide those same numbers again. So first we're going to just write them out as a division problem. We're going to write it out as a fraction. Um, again, our grouping rules say that we can split this into two separate fractions. And our exponent rules say that we can subtract our exponents. So if you have uh, 10 raised to some power over 10 raised to another power, well, I can actually simplify this as 10 raised to the top power minus the bottom power. So 10 to the 3 minus 6, which will be 10 to the negative third. Um, so then we just do our ordinary division of our significance, and that will give us um, a long decimal, like 0 0.3582, and it goes on and on and on, um, times 10 to the negative third. Um, now notice, again, uh, this result is not in scientific notation because the first digit to the left of the decimal is actually a zero and not a non-zero number. So we're going to have to adjust the number to follow the rules of scientific notation. Um, and then we have to record that adjustment in our power. So we moved the decimal point to the right once. So in our power, we have to record that to get the final number back out, we'll have to move it another digit to the left. So now we've got this long, long, long repeating decimal. Um, but just as in multiplication with division, we can round our number um, to the number of digits as the shorting, shortest starting significant. So in, our, in this case, the significants are 2.4 and 6.7. Both of those are two digits long. So our result will, can be rounded to two digits. So... Um, that was multiplication and division, now adding and subtracting. Well, for adding and subtracting, the actual rules are that you convert it to an ordinary decimal, i.e. convert it out of scientific notation, um, add and subtract it regularly, and then convert it back to scientific notation. So, for instance, let's say we had 2.4 times 10 to the third and 6.7 times 10 to the sixth. Um, so if we wanted to add the numbers, we would first convert both numbers to their ordinary decimal re representation. Okay, so on the left one, 2.4 times 10 to the third uh, means that we're going to add, we're going to move the decimal to the right three times, and 6.7 times 10 to the sixth means we're going to move the decimal over six times. So then we're going to add our numbers in the usual way, and that's going to give us a result that is still not in scientific notation. And finally, we're going to convert the number back to scientific notation. And so adding and subtracting scientific notation is pretty straightforward because it's actually ordinary sub addition and subtraction. You just have to convert the numbers first and then convert them back. So that's scientific notation. Um, and again, we write numbers in scientific notation um, because they, they're a more compact way of writing very large and very small numbers, and they show you at a glance how big and how small the, the number is. For instance, if you had something that had a whole bunch of uh, zeros, if you had a decimal number that was 0 0.00000 and had a whole bunch of zeros out the front, it might be hard to see just exactly how small that number is, but in scientific notation, it tells you in the power how many... Um, digits um, of zeros that we actually will have before you get the actual number. Now, significant figures um, are about being honest about how precise we're being. Significant figures um, trip a lot of people up, but um, that's because most people don't understand what they're used for. And I think once you understand what they're used for, they make a lot more sense. So if you think about measurement, anytime you measure something, there's a certain amount of error to it. So, you know, if I say that this is 1.2 inches, well, it might be 
1.03 inches, or it might be 1.21 inch, or it might be, you know, there's, when I say 1.2 inches, I'm, I might be being as precise as I can, but I'm not being infinitely precise. Um, so when we do, if I do calculations based on that, um, I don't want to only communicate to you the answer of my calculation. I also want to communicate to you how precise my result is. So significant figures are merely just a set of rules that help us to report results in a way that is not more precise than we can justify. So um, the, the rules that we're going to learn here is not a perfect system, um, but it is a standardized and straightforward system. There's just a couple basic rules you have to follow, and once you understand those, it makes reporting significant figures easy. Now, you might want, wind up with uh, issues with um, significant figures, and you can probably identify, if you think really hard about some places where there's some flaws in significant figures. That's true, um, but the details on how to report numbers in a precise way that is exactly on task with how precise the numbers could be, uh, that actually takes entire books to understand. And the goal of significant figures is rather than have a book-length treatment on how to report data, we're going to have just a couple of short, simple rules that allow us to do so um, quickly and easily with a minimal amount of fuss. Because if you, so to give you an example, let's say that we have one divided by three. So let's say I have uh, one inch, um, I measure something, or let's even say one foot. I measure something that's one foot long. I want to divide it into three parts. Um, well, if I tell you that I want uh, each cut to be at 0 0.33333333333333333 and so on um, feet, well, the question is, is how precise do you actually need that cut? How precise did you even measure that foot to begin with? Um, and so significant figures gives us a way to talk about our original measurements and our um, final calculations in a way that we can justify the precision that we, we report. So um, let's look at two numbers, uh, 2.5 and 2.500. Now numerically, they're the same. You know, if I multiply them by three, I'll get the same answer. If I divide them, I'll get the same answer. They're the same numbers. However, 2.500 indicates that we measured more precisely than if we just wrote 2.5, okay? So when we're using significant figures, we actually use the number of decimal points to represent how precise our original measurements actually are. Um, and so that's important because we want, the point is that we want to report not only what the number was, but we want to report how precise we measured it or how precise our measurements were that went into our calculation of it. So, how do we count significant figures? Well, there's a lot of rules that go into counting significant figures, but they're all simplified if you start with scientific notation. And since most of the numbers that you write uh, that for which significant figures matter, you have to write scientific notation anyway, it's easier just to start with scientific notation and count from there. Um, so if you write a number in scientific notation, the number of digits in the significand is exactly the same as the number of significant figures. Um, so if, you, if you've read your book and there's a lot of rules for um, counting significant figures, those rules only matter for numbers that are not written in scientific notation. So instead of worrying about the rules, um, the rule that I'm going to teach you is to just write the number in scientific notation and then count the digits. So example, how many, science, how many significant figures does 0 0.000789 have? So first, we're going to write the number in scientific notation. It's going to be 7.89 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, we're going to count the digits in the significant. 
there's three of them. So it has three significant figures. Now let's look at the number 7008.3. How many significant figures does it have? Well, we're going to write the number in scientific notation. Uh, the number is 7.0083 times 10 to the third. All right, so now we're going to count the digits in the significant. There are five. So that means this number has five significant digits. So if we don't use um, scientific notation, we wind up with an ambiguity. So let's think about the number 2000. How many significant figures does it have? Well, this number could be reported as a round number. Like, if you know, if you say, how many balloons do you have? Well, I think I put out about 2,000 balloons. Well, is that exactly 2,000? Is that approximately 2,000? Um, it's difficult to tell from the number. Unlike when you're dealing with decimals, um, I'm not going to include extra zeros in my decimal until, unless I actually measured it that precisely. Um, but in the case of large numbers, it's difficult to tell when reported in decimal um, how many significant figures we actually have. So um, it could be rounded. If it's uh, rounded to the nearest thousands, then there'd only be one significant figure. It'd be two times 10 to the third. If it was rounded to the nearest hundreds, then it would have two significant figures. It would be 2.0 times 10 to the third. Now, 2,000 could be an exact number. So it could be 2.000 times 10 to the third. So it's hard to tell from numbers that have zeros uh, between the number and the decimal place how precise they are being reported. So that's another reason why scientists use scientific notation, because it always tells you how precise the number is. Now there's three ways to resolve the ambiguity. In the chemistry book, I believe it uses the first way, and in the physics books, it uses the second way, and my preference is the third way. So the first way is that if there's no if there are no digits to the right of the decimal, then we're going to treat all the zeros on the right between the last non-zero digit and the decimal as non-significant. Therefore, if you take the number 3,400,000, that has two significant figures because we're going to treat all of those zeros between the four and the end of the number as uh, non-significant digits. Um, the way that the physics book does it is that if there is a significant zero on the right side of the number, it will mark uh, where the significance ends with a bar on the top. So you see the number there, it has three significant figures. So my preference though is to always write numbers in scientific notation. In that case, there's no ambiguity to resolve. So why are we doing all this? Well, Counting significant figures is important when doing calculations um, because it will tell you how precisely to round your final answer. When you multiply and divide decimals, you wind up with very large uh, decimal numbers, and so we need to know at what point we should round them and at what point should we keep them. So there's a couple of significant figure rules that you have to keep in mind. Um, first of all, you don't have to apply significant figures until... Uh, the end of your calculations. So um, I wouldn't worry about, I, I generally keep as many, as many decimals as you feel comfortable with and um, just do your rounding at the end. So the rules are, when multiplying and dividing, the result should have the same number of significant figures as the input with the fewest significant figures. So for example, um, if I have 2.4 and I divide it by 55.23, I will get a very, very long repeating decimal answer. Um, but if you notice, um, my two numbers, the first one has two significant figures and the second one has four significant figures. And so the one with the, uh, uh, the input that has the fewest significant figures is 2.4. It only has two significant figures. So my result, I will round to two significant figures. Okay. So that's our multiplying and dividing rule. So when adding and subtracting, the result should have the same um, 
same number of digits to the right of the decimal as the input with the fewest numbers to the right of the decimal when written in ordinary non-scientific notation. So if I have 2.334 plus 0 0.5, uh, the result is 2.834, but because my 0 0.5 doesn't have additional digits uh, to the right of the decimal, um, I can only, I, I should round to one digit to the right of the decimal, because that's the, um, that, because 0 0.5 is the number uh, with the fewest digits to the right of the decimal. So, um, depending on when you round, um, the final number that you come up with, may differ slightly from what's in the back of the book, um, and that's okay, it just reflects the fact that the inputs weren't exact to begin with. So if your final digit is off by one, um, that usually just means that you rounded slightly differently or at a different place than the book did. It's not actually necessarily a wrong answer. Now there is um, an exception to these rules, and that is for exact numbers. Any exact number is treated as having basically infinite significance. In other words, it doesn't influence the number of decimals in the result. So for example, every person has two hands. If I have 765 people, how many hands do I have? Well, I take 765 and multiply by two, which would give me 1,530. So um, normally this would be rounded to one significant fig figure since two only has one significant figure. However, two is exact, so it doesn't limit the precision of the result. In this case, actually, the number of people is exact because you can't have partial people either. Um, so um, if you have, any, anytime you have something where an exact number is used, then the exact number is not, uh, is not treated as in terms of significant figures. It is uh, basically ignored. You use the other numbers to tell you how significant your result is. So, in summary, um, scientific notation allows us to write large and small numbers in a compact way. It allows us to see at a glance how large or small the number is. Otherwise, we'd have to contend with all those zeros and try to count them ourselves. It makes it obvious how precise the number is, um, because you can tell by uh, how many digits are in the significant, uh, just how precise the number is. And it simplifies calculations with very large and very small numbers. So if you remember doing those multiplications, you only had to really multiply and divide the significands, and the powers, um, you could just add and subtract the powers uh, when doing the um, multiplication and division of powers. So, um, on significant figures, they're used to make sure the results of calculations are stated only with a precision that can be justified by the initial measurements. Significant figures are used to have straightforward rules for determining significance, but it's not a perfect mechanism. Um, it's just the one that we have. So significant figures and scientific notation work together to give science a standardized notation that serves the needs of scientific calculations. So hopefully that helps clear up um, questions that you have about uh, scientific notation and significant figures. If you have additional questions, uh, please ask them below. Thank you very much.